Hello and welcome to the pre-show for our reveal stream for Destiny 2 Year 2. We're excited to have you here today. I have two developers in the hot seats. This is Deej. I will be your host when the stream begins. This is a sound check. This is not the stream. We will have no reveals during this sound check. This is simply an opportunity for us and yourselves to adjust your audio levels so that we don't blow out your eardrums while we blow your minds. We have this opportunity that we wouldn't have had years ago to ship a game and then really collaborate with people outside the studio to figure out like what is the best version of that. Honestly, yeah, like we're building something the community has been asking for, and it's accumulation of everything that we believe the game needs to be. The upside to that is we're not honing anything back. All the feedback we've heard for the last year is this is it. It's in Forsaken.
We want this release to have a, a different tone and a different vibe. We sort of just embrace that Western revenge vibe. You go to a darker place, you're gonna take on a different role as a guardian. A barren landscape with like the asteroid vibe with like tumbleweeds mm -hmm. and I mean that just sounded cool. Grit man, wanna bring the dirt back. But what better way to start a story than to start it with a prison break? Right. Cade's been filling this prison <laughs> with, with bad guys that are that are really bad. And so when it breaks, things can happen to all the world. First place you're gonna go to is the Tangled Shore, which is a new part of the reef that you've never seen before. That's right, my friend. It's a collection of lashed together asteroids yes. and rocks out and in the asteroid belt. It's though. very otherworldly and it's uh, full of uh, pirates and assassins yep, and bad thieves. Guys. It's become a lawless place, it truly is a frontier. It's completely taken over. The most malevolent force there is the scorn. They're very aggressive. They're always going to charge and push you. The barons are the top dogs in the scorn, and each one has gone back and like committed nefarious crimes. I think of it as the reverse Magnificent Seven, like the worst of the worst criminals. You are hunting down these different barons. In fact, they're called baron hunts. So one baron is a sniper, and you have a sniper versus sniper battle with them. Another baron is this big, giant, hulking melee character. One of the things we're most excited about is the new weapon system. Hey, if you like Destiny 2, great, play that way. But if you like Destiny 1, great, play that way. But if you're crazy, why not three shotguns, right? Just for the fun of it. We need to have as many ways as possible, and then we need to have people fighting about it. Like, no, nah, man, you, you up, you're taking the wrong weapons, or can I say <laughs> So random rolls are coming back. Every single weapon is going to feel different when it drops. And we're improving the mod system, so you can customize your weapon the way you want it. We've got a whole new masterwork style system coming together where you actually are able to kind of move your levels up over time. And so there's investment back on the weapons again. New supers, yeah. Crazy, crazy new what's, supers. What's your favorite? Fire knives are mm. awesome, which is a different take on Golden Gun. We took a lot of uh, inspiration from Rise of Iron, cast that thing, you got a huge hammer now, and you slam that thing down, and it sends out this fire in front of you that then creates a fire tornado. We gotta take it to the next level, you know? <laughs> the idea that anyone who plays, however they play, they're gonna have some new way to, to engage. Yeah. I'm in love with the new Void Warlock uh, teleportation that's like super anime, just like doo -doo 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 -doo. We've been having great games with the, the Arc Warlock. Basically cast this thing, he pulls back. Yeah, and it's gonna break the game, and I think that's amazing, yeah. You know? <laughs> we also wanted a new weapon type that felt meaningful, so we came up with a bow and arrow, so, which seems kind of crazy, but when you use it, you it, feel like godlike. It is utilitarian, it's fantastical, it's also sci-fi. So we have a short range bow, we have a medium range bow, we have a long range bow. But we built this guy which is like supposed to be super techie. You're like, why would you ever choose a bow in a game that has an automatic, you know, machine gun? But boy, it's deadly. I mean that's a nice machine gun you got there, buddy, but right? And it's, and then it's done. The biggest thing for me going into production on this game was like a new way to play, a new thing to do that like is new to Destiny. Let's see what we've got. We want to be able to give players what they want, but also surprise them. Gambit is a brand new mode. Destiny begs to marry PvE and PvP together. It's like adding bacon to peanut butter and jelly. You start off uh, being able to see the other team that you're going to compete against, so you can taunt each other, you can emote. Each team is in their own separate arena, and they're being assaulted by combatants. They're dropping moats for you to collect, you bank them. When you put them in your bank, you're going to send a blocker over to the other side that locks their bank down. They can't put moats into it until they take out that blocker. Filling up your bank with the moats is how you summon your primeval. You burn it down, that's it. Round's over. The interesting part 
is that we allow one person from your team to go over to the other side and physically invade. I mean, I've seen people that just hate PvP. Like, the first time they invade and they get multiple kills, they'll come back and they'll be like, suck it! It's awesome. <laughs> We leave the raid team alone. I mean, if you can't tell, like, we just kind of let them do their own thing. But we, this, we have Joe like, over there. For this next raid, we wanted to get back to the epic adventure where you're going out to slay a big monster again. This raid has more bosses than any raid we've ever had before, and we're really excited to get players in there. The raid is actually about more than just the raid. It's about the, the Dreaming City, the place that the raid exists. And it's an in-game destination that we've never done before is the Awoken homeland. I could talk about the Dreaming City for hours. It's like if the Vault of Glass and Dreadnought uh, had a baby. If they were right? like twins. Or the twi yeah, that's actually more accurate. Yeah, they're like, like twins. twins. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You had twins, yeah. and then you took those twins, and you just you put them on the doorstep of Peter Jackson, raised them as his own, and then that's the Dreaming City. It is magical and weird and mysterious. It's designed to be a destination that has puzzles that you need to solve. A lot of hidden corners, lots of passageways that might not seem to exist the first time. And the raiders, they affect this destination. They change it for everyone. It's like this cyclical end game place where there's just secrets and different activities that unveil over time. So the Dreaming City that you see at launch is not gonna be the same Dreaming City two, three weeks later. So with every design decision we've made for the Forsaken, like the first thing we ask is how will the community react to this? Players want their investment in Destiny to matter, and they want to be able to see that reflected in the content. We knew we wanted to do something for the collectors in our game, so we built a feature called the Collections. It's a way for you to track all the items that you can go out and acquire. There's so much gear in our game. There are 2,000 items you can get. Go get them. You can look at sets and you can say, I haven't filled out this set. What do I have to do to go get it? If I want to find like how many guns in the world, I can actually go look now. We also had a triumphs thing, which is just acknowledging your achievement. It like ties into records, it ties into lore. It's a thing that can help you drive like, hey, I want to do that. And if I do those things, I can get a title. This, like I can have a title yeah, floating over like, my name that says that I'm a god or whatever, not, not me, but like you. <laughs> We wanted Forsaken to feel like a game that never ends, so we're gonna reinforce the hobby and make the experience something that can be played night over night. We're changing the weapon slots. We're changing how the pursuits work. We're adding new features like the collections and the triumphs. We built Gambit. We've got a whole bunch of new weapons to chase, exotics that are really powerful. We have Lisa focusing on some sweet new exotic armor. Maybe we gone overboard, like dialed it too high. to go out there and collect in the world, exotic armor pieces to go out there and hunt. We're working on armor perks, random rolls, new mod system, new subclass paths. We're making Forsaken for people who love Destiny. Making a game that we can all love, that, that is the goal. That's what we're gonna constantly be pushing towards, always. Everything we're building is through that lens. Hello. I just, I just saw you guys in that video. Yeah. I know. It's very, very so fancy. Is this, are we live? Is this real? Calm down, dude. I guess, is, yeah. is this now? It's just me. Okay. <laughs> Everything's right. fine. Okay, good. Well, in that case, yeah. welcome to the live portion of the show. Uh, that was obviously a Bungie Vidoc, uh, so that we could reveal Destiny 2 Forsaken, uh, a major expansion to the game that we've been playing since last September. And this September, we're going to have all new ways to play and collect and evolve and do awesome stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it's my pleasure to introduce you to my two fellow co-hosts, uh, two developers who have been leading our team in the development of this new adventure. Uh, they are Scott Taylor Hi. and Steve Cotton. How's it going? Uh, so uh, these two gentlemen have been with me on stream uh, previously. Uh, if you've been watching Bungie streams for a while, they may seem familiar to you. Uh, Scott, you and I sat next to each other uh, right around this time last year? Uh, two years ago. Two years ago. Yep. God, time passes it so does. fast when you're playing fun. Um, so we were together for the reveal of Rise of Iron. Yeah, that was great. And Steve, you and I traveled all the way to Germany by way of two planes and four trains. 18 and trains 18 and trains. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you were on stream for the first time that we ever revealed uh, private matches and uh, playing uh, in yeah. 
Rise of Iron. So welcome Good back. Time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for people who might not be uh, familiar with you, uh, for people who might not know what you do here, sure. uh, talk to me about what you do at Bungie and what your contribution to Forsaken has been. Right, so I am the uh, Forsaken project lead. My primary job is controlling Steve. <laughs> oh, okay. when, I, when, when I'm not doing that, yeah, okay. uh, we work with a lot of awesome people, uh, the leads of the game, to, to make sure that Forsaken ships and is everything that we want it to be. So uh -huh. that's, that's kind of what I do. Do you concur? Are you under control? <laughs> well, I uh, prefer... Uh... <laughs> Loose cannon, I guess. Uh -huh. maybe. Okay. No, I'm. I'm. He's. He gets. He keeps me under yeah. control. Yeah. Step good. into analysis. Step into. Yeah. <laughs> it's it work? It's the, it's, <laughs> it's the West World. So what's your what's your uh, role? On, uh, uh, oh yeah. Um. I, you know, a game, any game, but a game like Destiny, especially. Uh, somebody kind of has to try to keep the whole game in their head so that we're making all the right decisions for sure. what's best for the game. So, I guess that. I mean, that's what I do, and uh, and you know, set high level direction and goals for the teams, but. Mm -hmm. Mostly, I think, you know, I just listen to a bunch of great ideas and not a lot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we, you know, enabling so many different disciplines, so many different teams to work on this, on this game. And mm -hmm. we got to meet a lot of those teams and a lot of those people in the Vidoc. Uh, narrative designers, sandbox yep. designers, mission designers, activity designers. Yep. Uh, so it's all coming together all over again under, uh, under your direction. So, so we're grateful for it. Uh, what have been your overall goals? What have been your super objectives uh, in the leadership and guidance of all these teams working together? So we had two goals uh, with the Forsaken, Scott and I. Um, the first was uh, to kick off the game with a brand new story, uh, one that had a new tone and a new style, one that we're both really, really excited about. Yeah. You, could saw, you saw a little bit of it in the Vidoc, but... Just a little uh, bit. We're not going to talk about that much today. I think we, <laughs> we want to leave that for, for a little bit later, but... Uh, the other goal uh, was that we r wanted to reinforce the Destiny hobby. Okay. Uh, and that was about bringing depth back to the game. Uh, it's about not you know, depth in the way that we challenge players and the way that they discover secrets and the systems and, and the way that they learn about the game and feel smart and think about the game. So uh, that, those were the two goals. Okay. Um, when you talk about uh, bringing depth, depth to the game, uh, I think you know, we took a look just briefly at the Dreaming City. Uh, during the Vidoc. And I think this is a great piece of evidence as to your commitment to the end game and exactly how you're bringing this depth to the end game. Uh, and I love the statement that this is the first time that we've ever built a destination to serve as the home to the end game, a place where all of those things can live. Yeah, so I don't want to, I don't, yeah, I don't want to spoil the surprise here because that's what the Dreaming City is about, is mm -hmm. about being a surprise. But, uh, it is it is a, a destination built uh, to have to, to have some of the hard, the most difficult challenges and yeah. the deepest secrets, uh, but it's one that I think we want to leave for another yeah. day as yeah. well. Yeah, secrets aren't very valuable. Yeah. We're being coy them. about well, a lot. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, we haven't we haven't. I mean, actually, uh, we're just really excited about Dreaming City, and it ties into the raid in a really special way. And mm -hmm. so we're showing more of that than we have before. But it's because we uh, really want to show that that the raid and the, they all tie together mm -hmm. in a really mm -hmm. impactful way. But player discovery is like. Really important, and yes. so that, yeah. I think we're going to kind of leave it there. That's fine for this, yeah. but you have a lot of end game. Pretty. You have a look lot of how pretty. It is yeah. pretty. Look it how is, pretty. It, it is pretty, and you have a lot of end game promises to make. Mm -hmm. uh, these are these are promises that we will keep in the game, and also uh, promises that we will elaborate on all summer long. Yeah. Uh, this stream is the beginning of a conversation. I think we're kind of creating a table of contents of conversations that we will have later on. Uh, the story reveal is planned for E3. Mm -hmm. So next week, we'll learn a lot more about the story that they're telling. Uh, we will learn more about our endgame challenges as the summer unfolds. Uh, may even invite some people outside of our studio to experience the Dreaming City and to talk about its promise because we're pretty good at saying that what we make is cool, <laughs> yeah. but uh, an outside yeah. perspective is always valuable. Yep. Yeah. So these are uh, curiosities that we will pay off later. Uh, apologies if you want us to delve all the way oh, into the deepest reaches it's of the Dreaming City. We want, we want you guys to play this game. <coughs> yes, we want you we guys do. to play the yeah. game. We do, in fact, want you yes. to play this game. Yes. Uh, so these are uh, conversations that we'll have later. Uh, something that we talked about a great deal in the Vidoc was Gambit. Gambit my shirt. Gambit, yes. <laughs> or as our community has come to know it, Redacted. Yes. <laughs> so uh, this was the super secret mode that uh, we have had some people in our community um, get a first glimpse at here in our studio. 
Uh, if you were one of those people, one housekeeping <laughs> note, uh, we do want your reactions and your hot takes about Gambit uh, to be kept under wraps until the first day of E3. But if you'd like to raise your hand and say, I have played Gambit, uh, that's a, a, a good beat for they this can, moment. Oh, they can, can replace redacted. With, 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 with Gambit. Gambit. With Gambit. Yeah, that's about as much as the conversation has evolved. <laughs> that seems good. But uh, while we did talk a lot about how it plays and uh, you know, what the essential experience is, uh, what have been your goals for, for this new activity? that We've never seen Destiny played this way before. So, uh, so it was really important uh, to both Scott and I uh, that, that uh, Forsaken was able to deliver some, a new experience yeah. to people, right? Um, and so what we gave the team, Lars, Robbie Stevens, uh, the team free reign to make some to invent something completely new, uh, but specifically one that took advantage of all the best aspects of Destiny. So, shooting monsters in the face, <laughs> shooting guardians in the face, bring those together, and then add like big bosses and small bosses and treasure goblins. Oh, like moat goblins. Moat, There's moats. Yeah. Moat goblins. Moat goblins. Like a golden axe. Yeah, and yeah. then. One uh, player's moat is another player's treasure. That's true, actually. <laughs> yes, go. that is true. If you bank those them. are a thing. Mm -hmm. Those are a thing. Yeah. So uh, you know, all of those things, and then the team did something really awesome, and they added a risk reward strategy mechanic to the yeah. game that uh, really changes the the conversations and the way that you the decisions that you make during the game. It's not only it's no longer just about how fast can I shoot a guy and bring him down. It's about well, sh should I be killing guys? Should I be collecting moats? Should I be banking? Should I be invading the other team? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the result is is f fantastic to play. The community got to play it. And then, uh, yeah, uh, actually, this is really cool. At E3 next week, yes. people will get to play Gambit. That's what we're going to have there. So yeah. on the show floor, we're going to have Gambit. Um, and Gambit will also be, like, on the director, it'll be its own node. This new activity will live alongside the Crucible, the Strikes, and now we have Gambit. Yeah, it's its own, it's its own thing. So... As uh, Scott just said, we will be at E3 uh, for the sixth year in a row. We will be uh, at the Activision booth uh, working with our friends to put on a great show for everyone who gathers around that space. Uh, stop by and play. Uh, stop by and spectate. Uh, this is our first opportunity for people to get hands-on with this new activity. Now, if it's a little late for you to be planning a trip to Los Angeles or trying to score an E3 badge and you want to join the hands-on pre-launch conversation, we're gonna take that same Gambit build, that same pre-launch build that we're bringing to E3, and we're going to ship it straight to Tampa, Florida after E3 is over so that it can be playable also at Guardian Con. So we're going to be sending an away team to that gathering of community and content creators. Uh, Gambit will be playable there. And uh, if you want to be included, get yourself a ticket to Guardian Con because we'll be there too, and uh, we'll see you there. Uh, anything else that we want to say about Gambit before we move on? Just excited for people to play it. Yeah. Yes, yes. So you've talked a lot about Great. reinforcing the hobby, and uh, once Destiny, um, once the Destiny campaign is finished, uh, a lot of players are always asking us, "What's now? What's next? How are you going to keep me engaged over the course of a year? Give me a roadmap." for all of the other moments when I know that my hobby as a guardian is going to be infused with new things to do. Uh, one of our new answers to that question is something that we're calling the annual pass. Uh, this is a new way for us to sustain the game with new releases of content. Uh, and if we can keep the main graphic on the screen for just one moment longer, uh, I want to call out the fact that the annual pass uh, has three different releases. Uh, this is live on destinythegame.com right now, uh, and because our product pages have gone live, we just want to set some expectations for how this is different from what you may have known this year. Uh, if you played Curse of Osiris, if you played Warmind, this is a different thing. So if you're the type of person that you know, throws your money down on something as soon as it becomes available, we'd like to set your expectations that this is different than those expansions. What we have here are three different releases that will come out over the course of the year. Uh, Black Armory, Joker's Wild, and Penumbra uh, in the winter, spring, and summer to come. So these releases are a new way for us to deliver content. Uh, what would you say, what purpose would you say that these serve? Uh, I think that the, the, the purpose here is to give you more of what you want more often. Okay. Um, and. Uh, uh, it's also about it's more about the, uh, chase, it's more about chasing the power and the gear, okay. um, and uh, 
basically that's yeah that's yeah. it i mean it's yeah. more, more often a more stuff that you huge care about huge cornerstone for destiny the acquisition of power yeah. the collection of new gear the upgrading of your character that's really what people talk about when they refer to the destiny hobby yep uh, let me take a deeper dive into exactly what you'll find in these different releases uh, over the course of the year in the annual pass and if we can give people uh, a read on this uh, here is what across these three different releases you can find in your annual pass. Uh, end game challenges, obviously new things to collect, uh, new and returning exotics, uh, new pinnacle activities, you know, deeply challenging things to really test your, your skill and your teamwork, uh, new triumph records to collect, and we'll take a, a look at exactly how that'll unfold in the game, and new lore to discover and collect in the game yeah. using new tools and features that we'll be delivering to uh, every player. Uh, the annual pass does have exclusive content for the people that purchase it, uh, but this collection game is about to evolve in year two. Uh, so I would say that to set your expectations for this right now, we're leaning harder into the things that keep you coming back to the game week over week, month over month. Uh, it's activities, it's action, it's challenges, it's things to earn and collect. We're not leaning as hard into cutscenes or cinematics. Obviously, we're telling a story, mm -hmm. but it's a story that you'll discover in moments of action, the reason we play the game, and uh, things that we can collect, and our understanding of the world that you're creating will grow over time through the annual pass, and you'll be building on the great story that you're telling in Forsaken. Yeah, it's definitely about not having just a single moment where people come back mm -hmm. uh, and having that kind of extend and stretch out. Yeah, yeah. And each of these releases, uh, the three releases that we indicated, each of those releases begins a new season of play. So they kick off the season. Uh, it's a season that every player can enjoy with the people that own the uh, annual pass, but it is uh, <clears throat> sort of a thematic shift. So with the new beginning of the season, with the new release in the annual pass, we create a new theme that presides over everything that people will be doing in the game. Yeah. This is obviously something that you'll need to know more about. Uh, this is something that we will be talking more about, but because it's live and because it's available right now, we felt this was an important conversation to have before everyone made the assumption that, oh, these are these, these, are these two expansions that I'm used to getting in Destiny. Uh, we've reinvented the way we sustain the hobby. We've reinvented the way that we release new content after launch, and uh, we'll talk more about this, we'll talk more about everything we're talking <laughs> about today, but we'll definitely talk more about this soon. Uh, anything else you think I should be saying about that? No. That's you, kind of the new raw it. space, you covered but it. we'll get more into it. In addition to the annual pass, obviously there's all the things that we do for every player mm -hmm. of Destiny 2, and uh, we're going to continue to update the game. Uh, got a brand new roadmap to put on the screen. Uh, if all has go, uh, gone according to plan upstairs, we have a brand new roadmap that has been updated on Bungie.net right now. So if this isn't entirely legible on whatever screen you're using, Bungie.net has our new June 5th development roadmap. And this is where we plot the updates that every player of Destiny 2 will receive. Uh, and as you can see, update 1, 2, 3, 1.2.3, so you don't think I'm just counting, uh, due out on July 17th, has some pretty exciting new developments that uh, will change the game even before Forsaken launches. Uh, let's call out some of the things that we're looking forward to the most. Uh, Solstice of Heroes seasonal event. It's very fun. Yeah. yeah. So, and while uh, the annual pass will have different things for players to tackle and enjoy, Every player of Destiny 2 is going to continue to enjoy these seasonal events, these special occasions. Mm -hmm. Solstice of Heroes really deserves its own proper reveal. Yeah. So we will talk more about how that'll play out. Uh, 6v6 Quick Play? Pretty great. Yeah. yeah. So the, the 6v6 playlist in the Crucible will permanently be home to six players versus six players. Uh, we'll keep competitive as that you know, intimate, little sweatier, a little more challenging 4v4 engagements. Uh, and for those solo players out there that aren't excited about six players versus six players in those stacked teams, the Rumble playlist becomes permanent. Uh, and then all of the other things that you may have seen on a previous roadmap, bounties, uh, prestige raid layers, and uh, some of the different features that improve your quality of life as a player. Uh, let's move on to year two. Yeah. Uh, along with the launch of Forsaken, 
come a lot of interesting evolutions to the Destiny player experience. Uh, Scott, I think you can agree with me when I say yeah. that the most important development, the most important <laughs> update on this list, bulk shader deletion. <laughs> I don't think it's a question. I think it's yeah, just. It, a, I think you. I think that is just a fact. Yeah, that we much can just move it up the bulk list. Bulk shader and, yeah. and and then shaders just also are put it where it belongs in our, in our yeah. top. Other yeah. some other features. All kidding well. aside, shaders yeah. have been a very large conversation yes. in our community. But there's a lot of other things here that uh, a lot of players of Destiny can get very excited about. Uh, you know. Power matters in Iron Banner and Trials. So if you want to win in the Crucible in those special events, you better commit to the uh, progression of your Guardian. Uh, what else are you excited about? What else you want to call out? Oh man, well there's Vault Space, which is also another thing that, that you know, yeah. we add all this content and uh, I don't want to spoil ahead, but that we're adding random some some random roles. And yeah, so, sure. Weapon, so like, yeah, we can, yeah, we, we can jump into that. But but those things all tie together, right? Yeah. So uh, because we're doing that, the uh, the vault space is pretty mm -hmm. important. Um, we'll take a look at gear collection and in-game triumph in just a minute. But it's yeah. important to call out that uh, you know while collecting gear and keeping it in a menu that's sort of like your accomplishments, uh, weapon randomization or more affectionately known as random roles. Uh, that is something that is coming back. Let's it just is. say it again. Yeah, they're testing it upstairs right now. It's it's coming back. We're we're bringing it in, yeah. It's gonna be good. What's your goal for that as a game director? Yeah, the goal for uh, random rolls is just to get, uh, you know, to earn that to make earning gear more exciting to players, to, yeah. to personalize their chase for weapons and and, yeah. and, and armor, and, and to like really get uh, add that depth that we were talking about before to a system that they can now kind of learn and dig into and yeah. try to figure out. Yeah, I'm that. loving this recurring theme of depth. Yeah. yeah, every drop has the potential to be exciting, to be something new. And uh, then when you get those weapons, uh, how do we arrange them on our character? Uh, you know, the, the weapon slot changes uh, are something that are in development. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen that in playtest. Oh, yeah, and uh, yes. Uh, actually, do you want to talk yeah. about how it works? Then I can... Sure, about... like weapon slots. Um, weapon slots are really exciting. I mean, all those, the, the, all the, all those things on that list are, are exciting. The weapon yeah. slots especially, uh, because the weapon slots are really about, like, giving you more control over your playstyle. So for me, it's about getting my fusion rifle back. <laughs> sure. That's just, you know, that's my priority. But, uh, but for everyone else, I think it's different, right? And yeah. so now you have more control over which weapons you can put in those first two slots. Uh, you can still roll your two hand cannons if you want. Um, or you can roll three shotguns, Deej, if, if that's... If that's uh, I, I, do enjoy, I do enjoy shotguns. Yeah, but it I changes the way best. that you think about, uh, mm -hmm. think about the weapons that exist today because mm -hmm. it's going to like, force you to move things around in a yeah. way. That's that's really interesting, and then uh, it, cha it changes the way you think about ammo and the way that it works. And so I'm really excited for people to play the weapon slots at E3. Yeah. And so yes, like Steve said. Sorry. The, the, to no. Your thunder there. Yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, Spoiler. I, I didn't control him. <laughs> yes. He was next yeah, there to me. You go. You're a yeah, loose I, cannon. You're I didn't a loose do cannon. I was keeping my mouth shut I for a little while on purpose. Right. Um, no. So uh, so at E3 we said we we're going to play Gambit. We, that that means we're also going to be able to play test the uh, the new thing. So if you want a sniper in your primary, yeah. you want play the bow, like mm -hmm. we're going to have those things uh, mm -hmm. as part of that, that Gambit yeah. experience. And an E3 test build, um, you know, is usually kind of, it's in development. Mm -hmm. It's not the full, it's not the full game. It's not the finished product. Yeah. Uh, we usually deploy a limited inventory for use there. So it won't be the full realization of how the new weapon slot changes will work, but it'll give people a sense of how we're changing combat with access to different types of weapons for different opportunities. And like you said, you're going to let people play the way they want. Yeah. And, it, is... and those are all going to be Forsaken weapons too. So it'll be new cool stuff that, uh, that people get to see in the different slots. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I did say that Destiny won't necessarily become Rocket Launcher the game, or was that just a fever dream from a rehearsal that we <laughs> had prior to no, the stream? Was, you, yeah. you said the fever dream. Did I say that live? Is, you this, did is this now? No, is this now? Is this now? Okay. Yeah, so there's all, all sorts of other conversations that we'll need to have about ammunition and balance and all of those things, so this will be a long conversation uh, throughout the course of the summer. Uh, where are we going next? We called out on the roadmap that gear collections right. and in-game yeah. triumphs are something that we're bringing to every player of Destiny 2, and we caught a glimpse of that mm -hmm. in the Vidoc. But just to reinforce the fact that it is in fact real, I would like to break net live to a build of the game. Can I can I say something? I would love for you to say <laughs> something. So this is this is a build we propped yeah. from someone's machine. It's totally in development. We are going full transparent. You're going to see things, numbers, whatever. They are all like. It's not they're not fake, but they're not real. They're the, they're, they're not the, done. They're yeah, not done. We're back like in the West the, World. Like, yeah, yeah, what yeah, is yeah, it? Yeah, so they're yeah. not done. And so when you see something that's a number on a screen or a, a, a like, it, this is a, this is about we're going to show you guys the bones, 
and I am not uncomfortable about this. No, this is going to be great. Yeah, yeah. It, this is a, a look behind the curtain. This is a glimpse of something that is, in fact, in development. Uh, you can see our brave guardian named Bungie TV. Uh, this is a, a hunter that we have uh, cobbled together uh, for the purposes of this demonstration. This is obviously not my character, because hunter. But uh, what, are you, what are you? I'm a, I'm a warlock. I know. Have we met? Oh. I'm a warlock too. There you go. How, yeah. you, do, how you doing? Here you go. Uh, what you are you, Steve? You take Titan. You what, guys are can you? Take your warlock. Okay. Yeah. So that's the end of the stream. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so if we take a look at uh, the global navigation here on our user interface, across the top, the first thing you'll notice are uh, some new feature tabs. Uh, the first that I'll call out are the triumphs. Yep. Uh, and if uh, you can pay some special attention to uh, some of the headers here. All of this is a work in progress. I want that placeholder medal. Yeah, you that want that amazing. placeholder medal? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's great. a hard is one Is it bad to get. that I actually want it just because it's like <laughs> yeah. glowy and, yeah. and yellow? But um, there's a lot of empty space that you can populate here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you talked during uh, the Vidoc about some of the different badges and some of the different titles that you can display to commemorate your accomplishments. We're going to take a very high level view of this, and uh, everything that you're about to see is a work in progress. So you can screenshot this, you can speculate this. All the numbers will change. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, Gambit-specific triumphs to collect and to lord over your friends. Uh, how you collect moats or the blockers, or you know, you can see that we've broken this out into different categories. Again, there are not zero of these things, but you can <laughs> see that this is about creating many different levels of meaning and, and letting you gather these things together and categorize them in ways that make sense. So that's Gambit, and then across here you can see that, uh, again, the numbers are, are meaningless right now. We are in development, uh, different triumphs for PvP, you'll be dispatched by the Vanguard, and then, of course, we are collecting in-game lore uh, so that when we're telling stories that you discover and collect, uh, even if there aren't cinematic cutscenes, uh, which you have in the Forsaken campaign, of course, but mm -hmm. throughout your hobby as a guardian, there are going to be other things that you get to collect and, and add to this and space. Just, and really quickly, how that works is yeah. that you're going to find items in the game that, that tell a story, and then you can go and gather them and collect them and then read them in here. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're going to find that story out of order, too, right? Yeah, I mean, you're going to find... Like, yeah, so like yeah, you, it, it's, uh, you're going to find items out in the world, yeah. and you're going to open them, and it might be page seven of the story, and you're going to piece it together yeah. um, throughout your travels of all the destinations. Like a well-armed anthropologist. <laughs> uh, so let's take a look at collections. Uh, you know, a lot of people have, when they talked about Destiny, you know, like, how many, how many guns? How many exotics? Yeah, yeah. Where can I find that stuff? How do you get that stuff? Uh, this is going to be a great guide as you assemble your perfect arsenal. Uh, again, we're going to leave a lot of this stuff for exploration at a later date, but just to show you how one of these categories works, we're going to take a look at the exotic arsenal. So you can see here that we have this grouped out by weapons mm -hmm. and armor. So if I find something out in the world, if I buy something from Xur, if that fated engram pays off, <laughs> this gets added to my collection. Yeah, so once you've, uh, once you've acquired something, then it's here. One of the, so this is obviously similar to the kiosk that's in the tower, but one key difference, as you noted earlier, is that you're, this is with you at all times. Yeah. So um, certain weapons, like the exotics here, you can buy back for a price. And so uh, you can, you know, with the vault space and with this, you can kind of move with some more confidence that you've, sure. that you've gotten the thing yeah. that you want. And when you say buy now. back, like if I were to acquire sweet business yeah. and dismantle it, not that I would <laughs> ever do that. Why would you do it's that? so sweet. But if I did that... Um, and then later on, somebody said, you dismantled sweet business? Yep. What are you, an idiot? Like, what, did you think you weren't going to put a, uh, an exotic in your heavy slot? Uh, <laughs> well, you are an idiot. But. Yeah, I know. I, uh, I am an idiot, but I still play this game, and I love it just the same. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, if I wanted my sweet business back, I could use this collection yep. system to restore it to working order yep. in my inventory. Right. Using different materials that I've gathered, it's different for different categories. Yep. It's a long conversation that we're not going yeah, to, to have really today. Yeah, to be really clear, that, that is explicitly about how the exotics work, and we're working on everything else. Everything so, else. Yeah. Everything else is a work in progress. And uh, because exotics are a thing of mystery and discovery, you're not going to tell me, you're not going to give me a full menu of what exotics you own and what exotics you don't. No, but to, to note uh, something there that I don't think we're going to exactly show, but. Uh, if you were hovering over an iron banner weapon or, or, mm -hmm. or piece of armor, it would say it would tell, it would tell you. Point it tells you how to get it. So it would tell you how to yeah. get it. It'd be like go sure. play that iron banner or go do the strike or whatever the okay. circumstances. Yep. It'll it'll let you know. Or if it's mysterious like that, 
it will it will yeah. you know there'll be there'll still be mysterious non exotic things as well. Yeah. And then we're still gathering these things together and putting them into interesting categories. Yep. All right. And then uh, the same goes for your weapons. You'll tell me where I can go find all my favorite legendaries, yep. or maybe document the things that I've earned as I progress. Do the same thing for armor, uh, breaking that thing out across all the different activities, all the different subclasses. Uh, collect all of your ghosts, all of your different bots, uh, all of my ships, all of my sparrows, and uh, flare. And flare, perhaps near and dear flare. to everyone's heart. Uh, the flare, the things that you use to decorate your guardians. Uh, here we have uh, our emblems. Here we have our shaders. It's important to wear some flair. It's important to express yourself. You do want to express yourself, don't you, Steve? <laughs> we we really do require 15 pieces of flair <laughs> oh, no. in Destiny 2. <laughs> yes. some, people, some, people, some people choose to wear more, <laughs> and we encourage that. That's from a movie. It's, it is. You have a case of the Mondays. Uh, yeah, I, I do have a bit of a case of the Mondays, even though it's Tuesday. Tuesday. But uh, we can Great. see that uh, this is uh, an opportunity for you to look upon all of your treasures. I don't know if these numbers are placeholder or if they are finished. Uh, pardon our dust. Let's just assume they're all placeholder. Let's just assume yes. that they're all placeholder. Yes. Let's, let's that play is that a, That is a fair assumption. And then, as we said over on the right, uh, all of that's work in progress or even to be revealed. So uh, we'll be filling in the raw space over here uh, as we finish our work on these new features. Yeah. Uh, and what else would you want to say about this? Boy, I mean, like, these were, uh, these are features available to everyone. Triumphs and collections are available to, to all the players of, of Destiny 2. Mm -hmm. um, so we're excited. We, I mean, I think, they think that, that all these things go together to tell a story about depth and about... Uh, you know, Destiny for me is at its best when I have a triumph I'm chasing that's tied to a bounty, that's tied to a material I'm gather gathering from a public event. And I, I feel smart because I chose to do these things and yeah. I'm trying to get the lore to finish the book. And, and so uh, Destiny's really unique in that way where mm -hmm. I, I, I I love Destiny the most when it's that. And I think that this, that's, yeah. that, that's been a big piece of what we've been trying it, to do. It was really powerful the moment this went in and we, yeah. we imported our own characters from home and, and you could see this just populate with the stuff you had and then the stuff that you still didn't have. And so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people out there have almost as much, <laughs> probably a, almost everything that they could possibly think that is out in the game, but this tells you like, no, you still don't have this piece or you still don't sure, have this sure. thing. So that and which sets do you want to complete? Right. It's, it was well, and really powerful. Collections launches with Forsaken, so yep. it's not going to be like, Moments of triumph where we say, moments of triumph are live, and har our most hardcore fans go in and say, cool, I'm done, where's my shirt? Right, right? right, right. Like, there's going to be all new things yeah. Yeah. to gather in yep. there. There are going to be all new things that you can go and do and collect, and the collections tab will be a great way for you to sort of plan your time, yep. which is yeah. something that a lot of people in our community talk about. I want to plan my time. I want to play my game in the most profitable way possible. I mean, yeah. One thing we've talked about, back to the depth of the hobby and everything, is just the, multiple per the parallel pursuits that we're going to that players want to be on at the same mm -hmm. time, whether it's the campaign or quests yeah. or we're adding bounties. And so this collections is just another, another aspect, another axis of, yeah. hey, I can be spending my time going and getting this thing while I'm getting a patrol and I'm hunting down an outlaw and I'm or doing all of these things. Or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, to, or the quest to delete Bulk shaders. Bulk shaders. Bulk it's going to be great. <laughs> cool, guys. Yeah. It's almost the title. Well, I think that's all we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that we have created more questions than we've answered by design. Uh, that was the plan. Uh, we will be at E3. Uh, we will be updating our blog every week. We will be at GuardianCon. We'll be inviting other people to play this game and to offer their uh, expert external opinions. Uh, this begins that old familiar summer cycle. If you are a <laughs> Destiny fan, uh, we're going to travel the world, we're going to talk to people wherever we can find them, and we're going to introduce them to Destiny 2 Forsaken. So... We're so excited. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's amazing. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for coming with us on this journey. Uh, thank you for playing. Uh, we'll see you at E3. Yeah. We'll see you at E3. Yeah. And you. And you and me and you and Lars and, and Lars the rest and of the Teej people. Teej from yeah. HMS. Teej from, yeah. Yeah, yep. from High Moon Studios, who's been a, a great partner. Oh, um, my God. The it's been amazing. And they were like, hey, you want to work with High Moon and go to San Diego every month? And I was like, I guess that's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, they've been amazing. They've been, they've been absolutely they've been incredible. It's Wonderful. been really great. Well, we'll see them at uh, E3 as well. Yeah. And uh, if we see you at E3, definitely uh, pull us aside and say hi. And uh, if not, hopefully we'll see you at some point this summer. Um, 
In closing, uh, we're going to take another look at the Vidoc, but not in full. Uh, the team that made that Vidoc for us uh, was given a challenge. We said, take everything that you're revealing, take everything that you're saying, take everything that uh, our developers have said on camera and compress it into 60 seconds. So let's see how they met that challenge with this. Be, yeah. Hope you enjoyed the show. Check it out. We're building something the community has been asking for. We want to be able to give players what they want, but also surprise them. We want this release to have a different tone and a different vibe. You're going to go to a darker place. You're going to take on a different role as a guardian. We're changing the weapon slides. We're changing how the pursuits work. Gambit is a brand new mode. Armor perks, random rolls, new mod system, new subclass pass. We're making Forsaken for people who love Destiny. Making a game that we can all love. That, that is the goal. That's what we're going to constantly be pushing towards. Everything we're building is through that lens.